Namaste. My name is Bob Smith. This is Introduction to Yoga. Number four. Begin breathing from the bottom to the top of the lungs. And on the inhale. And as you exhale, breathe out from the bottom to the top of the lungs. The diaphragm goes up on the exhale. On the inhale, the diaphragm comes down, the belly goes out at first. Then the lower ribs fill and the chest fills, the belly flattening last part of the inhale. On the exhale, you maintain the length of spine. You exhale from the bottom, your abdominal muscles active, your lower rib muscles squeeze, the diaphragm goes up pushing the air out from the bottom to the top, maintaining the length of spine. Inhale, diaphragm comes down, belly goes out, low ribs then fill, chest opens. You maintain the length of spine as you exhale and empty from the bottom to the top of the lungs. Abdominal muscles, intercostal muscles active, diaphragm going up. This is called Ujjayi breathing. Inhale from the bottom to the top of the lungs. The breath is loud through the back of the throat, sounding like this. And exhale. Same sound. From the bottom to the top of the lungs. This is the breath we want to maintain. Then find your own breathing rhythm. You'll be inhaling slowly, and as you exhale, maintain that length of spine. And this Ujjayi breathing is the breath we're going to work with throughout. Move your shoulders, roll your shoulders, move your legs, take them out, loosen your ankles and then turn around and come onto your hands and knees. So your knees under the pelvis, your hands under the shoulders, and begin with cat-cow. Cat is rounding, cow is flattening. That's on an inhale, exhale, round your low, middle, upper back, into the neck. Cat, inhale, belly goes down, the chest opens, shoulders back, neck arches. Exhale, tuck pelvis, ripple through the low, middle, upper back, into the neck. Inhale, pelvis lifts, low ribs drop, shoulder blades drop, neck arches. Exhale, tuck pelvis, ripple through from the bottom to the top of the spine. Inhale, down through cow. Exhale, ripple from the bottom to the top. Ex and then circle the ribs. Make circling actions with the low rib cage. And you can see as I change, the arms stay fairly straight. And as the ribs circle one direction, the pelvis might be a half circle behind. Really, there's nothing you can do wrong here. Just let it feel good in your back. Loosen your back. Then, bearing the weight on the left hand, shift your left side of the pelvis towards the floor. Your knees are spread a little bit, then you bear the weight in the right hand, your pelvis on the right side shifts towards the floor. It's a natural swivel move. Then back and forth one more time. You'll swivel to the left, the left side of the pelvis slightly off, bearing the weight through the left arm, your left low back stretches, and then take it to the right. Let the pelvis swing down towards the right hand, just above, let your right low back stretch out. Come back onto your hands and knees, a little more cat-cow, and then take your right leg straight back, stabilizing through the left leg, and then take your left arm straight out. Now as you're here, your back is pretty flat, you're reaching back through the right leg, stabilizing with the left, reaching out through the left arm, pulling both shoulder blades back, breathing as steady as you can. Then bring your left hand down and your right knee down. Move a little bit, then take your left knee back, straight back, bearing weight on the right leg, the right knee. Take your right arm out. As you breathe through, reach through the back leg, reach through the left leg, and reach through the right arm. Keeping the balance. It's tricky to keep the balance. So you're breathing slowly. 
reaching back through the left leg, out through the right arm, and yet your shoulder blade area stays back. And then bring that right hand down. Move a little bit. Just loosen the back muscles a little more. And next we're going to come to an easy dog where you hook under with your toes, you tip the pelvis up, your knees are well bent. It's an easy dog. And then down to the knees, tuck the pelvis, lean forward, bear the weight on the arms, wiggle out a little bit like a snake, making sure your low back feels okay with this arch. And then up back. Hook under with your toes, up towards the down dog with the well-bent knees. And so the shoulders can open, the back is flat. And then come back down onto the knees, tuck the pelvis and then lean forward. Your chest pulls open, your shoulder blades back. The neck should be long. You want to get the back and the front of the neck as long as possible. And then come out of the cobra and rest back into prayer position. Let your low back stretch out. Breathe steadily here. Prayer position is a good place just to rest in between postures. Feel your low back muscles stretching out. Just start to feel the impact of what those first few postures have done to you. From here, you'll come out and we're going to come to a standing position. So slowly Stand. As you stand, just move your legs a little bit and so you bring the energy through the legs. And then as you stand upright, open the hip joints slightly. The knees open slightly and the ribs lift off of that. So this is Tadasana, mountain pose. You're strong like a mountain, showing it from the side. We we'll rock back and forth a little bit on the towards the toes, and then back towards the heels of the feet, and then toes. And then finally you land in the middle with the pelvis over the feet, knees not locked, just a very easy knee position, the low ribs lifted, and that is mountain pose. Now from mountain, spread your feet about shoulder distance, and just let your arms and your torso and your pelvis swing side to side. Your arms kind of flap to the front and back. And then roll your shoulders and loosen your upper back. And we're going to stand on one leg. So bear the weight on the right leg and bring the left foot up. As you bear the weight on the right leg, wrap that outer right hip around. Open the left hip joint. So you can see with the hands here, I'm opening both hips, and then the ribs lift from there, and we breathe. Of course, the balance is the issue. We need to keep finding what it takes to stand through that right leg with the pelvis over the standing foot, and the ribs lifted. Like a tall tree, just tune into the tree realm. And come out of that first side, move, bend your knees, and move a little bit. And then we'll prepare to stand on the second side. Opening that left hip joint, bring your right foot in to the inner left leg. It could go to the inner knee or higher. Wrap that outer left hip open just slightly so the pelvis stays over the foot instead of going to the outside. Your right hip's opening, your hands together in prayer position. Tree pose. Leg and your foot are like the roots of the tree. Your torso is like the trunk of the tree. And then come out of tree, move your knees, move your hips. Now we're going to do a standing twist. It's tree with a twist. Swing your left leg back and then bring that left foot forward so the left foot's on the inner right knee. Your right hand's going to come across to the edge of the left knee. Your right side of the pelvis stays back as you lift the torso and turn back left. Your eye gaze should be towards the left, but not fully back. You fixate it on certain points. Breathe steadily. Keep the right hip back as your upper body turns slightly left. Your gaze will shift as you feel capable of staying there and moving. And then come out of that side. And we'll do the second side. Stand through the left leg. Bring your right knee back. 
Got left knee slightly bent, right foot onto the inner edge of the left knee, your left hand across to the right knee, your upper body turns back right slightly, the gaze fixates part way turning to the right. Stabilize the left hip, the left hip tends to turn inward as we turn back right, keep it open, keep it stable. On the exhale you're turning back a little bit on the inhale, steady. And then come out of the pose, move your hips, move your knees. And now we're going to try Ganesha pose. This is for one minute we're going to stand on the right leg. The left knee is hanging down like an elephant trunk. So the left quadricep is in line with the right quadricep. And of course we're bearing weight through that right leg and then you can move your left leg forward and back and it's a balance issue as you move that left leg. The right hip has to keep finding its slot to be able to take that left leg forward and then take that left leg back. And so the right leg is challenged. We keep finding what it takes. Now part of it is that the torso lifts and so you're getting support from other parts of the body. And now towards the end of the minute and we'll come, you could come into tree pose for a moment and then down. Move that standing leg hip a little bit. It's been tested slightly. Then of course we're going to stand on the other side. So you're going to bear the weight on the left leg. The left knee opens just slightly. We don't want to lock that leg back. And then the right knee straight down from the hip. Right foot straight back, the pelvis dropping gently, the ribs lifting, you can see the neck carriage, you want the chin in slightly. So be as steady as you can through that left leg and then start to move your choice. You could just stay in the Ganesha pose or move that right leg forward and then take it back. As you take it back you'll bend the knee. As you take it forward the leg could straighten some. The standing leg, the left hip has to work and then back, note the head stays lifted throughout. Forward or you could come into tree, really you could do anything during this minute, you could even come into that standing tree twist that we did before. And there's another minute and so then come out of that, loosen your left leg through which you just stood. Now from the one-legged, let's spread your feet about leg distance apart and fold at the hip joint. As you fold at the hip joint, you want your low back long, so you don't want the back to round. Your knees could bend and then take your torso towards the right. So both hands walk over and hold the right ankle. Your left low back is stretching, your right hamstring is stretching and then walk over to the left leg. Hold the ankle with your hands. Your right low back is stretching. Your left hamstring is stretching. Breathe there, always finding the Ujjayi breath. And then come in with the feet and come to vertical standing. Roll your shoulders. Now from here we're going to stand through both feet and do a standing camel. Feet are spread about hip distance apart. You don't want to collapse like that just was showing there. You want to lift the low rib cage, so your low back, you want to need to lift your chest, lift your low ribs out of the low back, lift your upper belly. Your neck's another issue, you don't want the neck to flop back, you want to keep a strong inner neck muscles. And then we come out, and you'll spread your feet, and bend forward, fold forward, not like a rounded back, but with a flat back. So you're bending your knees enough so you can get your low ribs to pull out. This helps to lengthen the low back after the back bend. Another breath or so here, Ujjayi breathing throughout. And then let's come up. Now we're going to bear the weight, take your left foot forward. You're just a foot and a half or so apart. Bearing the weight through the right leg with your left foot forward, lightly touching with your left foot. You arch back, your thumbs push on the sacrum, your low ribs lift. Your head starts to come back some, your chest lifting and you can only go so far back as you're on balance and your low back feels good. 
and then from there widen your feet and fold forward, fold over that left leg. Your hands can come onto the shin, onto that left shin. It's called pyramid pose. From the pyramid you'll keep the right hand where it was on that left ankle or in some cases if you're flexible enough the right hand touches the floor. That was called rotated triangle. It was just the beginning of it. Now the standing back bend, bearing turn to the right, bear the weight on the left foot, the left foot's turned 60 degrees, and then arch up, lift your chest. Make sure your low back feels good as you're lifting. Make sure your neck is long enough so you don't flop your neck back. Breathe slowly and then widen your feet and fold over that right hip joint. As you fold, the right knee could be bent some. Lengthening now as your hands come on to the right ankle. Low back long, long as possible, and then turn some to the right. This is tricky pose, rotated triangle. Possibly the hands on the floor, more likely it's up on the shin. Keeping some weight back as you pull up and around to the right and then come forward and come up and loosen your shoulders and just feel the effect of these earlier poses from here spread your feet your feet and twist feet out a little bit fold we're going to keep the right hand down midline turning left. As you turn left, your left sitting bone is a little higher than the right, but pull back with both sitting bones, out with the low ribs. Your neck stays long, the chin in slightly. It's a hamstring stretch, you're opening the low back as well. On the inhale, lengthening out. On the exhale, re-pulling out and then turning. And then come out of the one direction of twist, Turn to the other side. This is an easier version than rotated triangle, so we're spending a little more time on it. As you turn right, you can push off the sacrum with your right hand. The knees are bent as much as you need to, so the low back can stay long. As you turn right, keep the neck long, so it's one long spine. As you inhale, breathe through and lengthen. As you exhale, re-lengthen and turn. And then come out of the forward bend twist into a straight forward bend where you fold forward your hamstrings lengthening. From here bring your feet in a little bit, turn the feet out 45 degrees. Again try that twisting action, pushing off the right knee, twisting left, your spine long. Pushing off left knee, twisting right, your spine long. Again twisting left, I got this position from Ichiro Suzuki, the baseball player, and twisting right. He loves to do this posture. From here, we're going to come into what is called low horse. Your elbows first wedge to the inner knees, and then your hands on the ankles. You're pushing out with your elbows. The tendency is for the back to round. As you can see, my back is not rounded. Your Tipping the pelvis up in relation to the chest that's pulling out. Your inner thighs are opening. It's an inner thigh stretch. And always trying to lengthen the back. Always trying to breathe slow and deep. From there, we'll come down. And, and then come out of prayer position. Come back onto your hands and knees. Swing your left leg forward and back forward and then bring that left foot just to the inside of the left hand and lean forward. This is a forward lunge. It's a quadricep stretch on the right leg. You want the pelvis to drop. You could take your thumbs on the sacrum to drop the pelvis. Your low ribs lift. Your chest lifts. Your neck stays long. Breathe. So it's a back bend. And then you could Lean forward. Here's another version of it. If the lifting up is a little challenging, you could just lean forward. And then come back to your hands and knees. And swing your right leg back and then in and back. And then with the right knee bending, you'll take that right foot forward. 
you push with your right hand off that right knee. The left side of the sacrum turns forward, the right hip opens, the right knee opens a little bit to the right, and then your thumbs can come on the sacrum. Push off the sacrum with your thumbs, lift the low ribs, keep the weight out of the low back through the lift of the chest. Your neck stays long, chin at 90 degrees. Breathe steadily here. And lean forward. This is just another version. You could have done that the whole while. And then back onto your hands and knees. And now swing your left knee forward just to the inside of the left hand. Your left foot's in front of the right hip. Your left buttock is slightly off the ground. And your left hand then is going to push off the sacrum as your right hand holds the edge of the knee, edge of the left knee. You turn. It's a stretch to the outer left hip and your left low back. On the inhale, you're breathing steadily in. As you exhale, re-pulling out and turning. You can see I can hold the ankle, but most of you will push off the sacrum as you turn to the left. Neck stays long. And then come back on with your left leg coming back. And swing your right leg forward so the right knee comes to the inside of the right hand. That right knee opens. If your knee's troubled at all, you sit on a cushion. It's the same with the other side. You, it should not bother the knee in any way. And then your left hand comes across to the edge of the right knee. Your left hand, sorry, right hand back onto the sacrum. It's an outer right buttock stretch. On the inhale, you're steady. On the exhale, pulling out with the low ribs and turning back right, stretching your right outer hip and right low back. So you can see my right hand goes around and I can cinch onto the front knee foot. And come out. That's a half pigeon with a twist. Come back onto your hands and knees. Make little circles with your rib cage. And now from here, we're going to come on to our back and we're going to do some core work. Before we do the core work, rest with your knees in. And as you rest with the knees in, squeeze the knees as you exhale. Inhale, release. And then walk down, partway down the shins. Squeeze the shins as you exhale and release as you inhale and then a tiny lower squeeze the shins as you exhale then take your feet down and raise the posture is called bridge raise your pelvis your feet are parallel push with the feet and raise your pelvis you could weave your fingers or hold the ankles and holding the ankles here or weave your fingers underneath Bridge pose is to strengthen your back muscles and your buttock muscles. You can see the length of my belly. So we're trying to keep the belly long as you exhale and angle the sacrum toward the line of the knees and your low ribs away. So you're, the key to the support is your pelvis lifting and your belly drawing away, your upper belly drawing away, and then come down slowly out of the bridge pose. Bring the knees back in, hold the knees, squeeze and release. Squeeze on the exhale, release. Okay, now for the core work of lowering the legs, take both legs up, arms out to the sides. Lower your legs, toes are turned out, the heels of the feet stay together, lower the legs toward the floor, and then come up. Now you could breathe either direction. As you lower, you could exhale, and keep reaching out, trying to stay as long as you can through the low back, low back slightly off the ground. And as you come up, you could come up on the inhale. Okay, now we're going to add holding the position. And so lower your legs, whatever is a good working position for you. And then reach through and come in again up and then lower your legs breathe hold it raise
squeeze the neck just slightly. Your neck muscles are working. Reach through. Lower the legs. Reach, 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 reach. And bend the knees. Neck relax. Squeeze the knees. Of course, this is a nice position. Your low back is stretched out in this position. Now straighten your legs down along the ground and you're going to just raise your skull, not way up and don't arch your neck. So as you raise the skull, the hair touches, even in my case the hair touches. Your chin's at 90. It looks from the side like nothing's happening, but there's no weight on the head so your neck muscles are working. Breathe on the exhale, try to lengthen as your neck muscles are working. A little longer, breathe through it. Those with weak neck muscles will f definitely feel it. And then finally rest your head back and turn slightly side to side, relaxing the neck muscles. Now we'll add the two together. Take your legs up and out. And raise your head, but not too high just barely and so the feet are reaching out your head's reaching away from the feet as you exhale reach your feet out and lengthen your neck as you inhale stay steady exhale reach through and head down and knees in hold the knees move a little bit relax your neck and then take your hands onto the back of the head Pull the hands forward so you're stretching the back of the neck, the elbows coming towards the knees, towards the thighs. And then that nice back side of the neck stretch. And here we're going to do some core work for our low back. The position is called the locust grasshopper. Take your hands down just to the outside of the thighs. Lift your legs them pretty straight. You don't have to raise real high. Your chest is still raised some. The head's raised. Breathing through is work for the low back muscles. Try to keep your breath long as you exhale. Inhales and exhale and reach you. Back muscles are working but stay long and then you could possibly take your arms out or possibly forward. A lot of work going on. Breathe and then finally you come down, rest down with the hands under the forehead and your forehead resting on the top hand. And just let your low back ease out after the work there. It's like a crocodile sitting on the side of a river. Now from locust Bring your feet in and bring your heels of feet down towards the buttock. It's a bit of a quadricep stretch. If your quadriceps are too tight for you to reach the ankles, this is how the bow would look. You'd use a strap. If you can hold the ankles and get some leverage, then come up to bow that way, holding the ankles, pulling the feet back, opening the chest, as you inhale, you're pretty steady. As you exhale, try to pull back with the feet and out with the chest. And then come down and rest. The previous two poses were challenging for the low back muscles, but they're really good for the low back muscles. We need to wake all parts of the body up. Now, just try the upper back part where you weave your fingers and if your shoulders are too tight to get a purchase by weaving your fingers, you'd use a strap. But most of you could just weave your fingers, you're lifting the chest, the shoulder blades are drawing down the back. You're, this is an armless cobra. Your chest is raising like the cobra position. Your shoulder blades are drawing down the back. It's to strengthen the mid-upper back muscles, which become very important. And then from there, come down and then back into prayer position. 
Let your low back muscles stretch out in prayer position. Breathe. Feel the good benefits from the work we've been doing. Let your low back ease out. Steady breath as you're here. Then coming out of prayer position, take your legs sit and take your legs forward. I'm going to try a spinal twist. Bend your right leg under the left. Your right foot crosses to the outside of the left buttock. Your right leg come, sorry, your left leg comes up and across. Your right hand across to the top knee, to the left knee, and then you're turning left. Now as you you could come all the way across with the elbow, probably as you see there. Or it could be the forearm that holds. So either way, as you exhale, you turn the left hip. The left hip drops, your ribs lift. That's the key to the twist. Don't ground into the low back as you twist. Lift out of it. Both shoulder blades stay back down. Next stays long. As you inhale, you lengthen. As you exhale, you drop that left sitting bone, lift the chest and turn and then come out of that direction of the spinal twist. Take your legs forward, swing your left leg underneath the right, take the right leg up and across, your left arm comes across to the knee, to the right knee, and the main action is to stretch that top leg hip, in this case the right hip, the right sitting bone should drop. So as you twist, that right sitting bone drops and then the ribs lift, your chest turns to the right, you stay long with the neck, inhale steady, exhale drop right hip, lift ribs, turn, your left shoulder blade stays back so the neck can stay long. Inhale, you're steady, exhale, you turn. And you see the action. It's the pelvis low rib cage sorting out. That's the key to every pose. This should feel good on your low back and good on the right mid upper back. And come out of the spinal twist. From here, we're going to take your legs forward and then bend your left knee so the left foot comes to the inner right thigh. The forward bend over the right leg, you could use a strap if your right hamstring is tight or both hamstrings are tight. What we want in forward bend is the back to be long. And so if you round the back to get to the foot, it's you've lost the key point. The key point is to lengthen the low back as you stretch the hamstring. Now I'm showing holding the foot with the left hand with my right hand to the outside. And there would be with the strap, you'd just be a little bit higher. On the inhale, you're leaning out. On the exhale, so it's a very subtle twist towards the right, so the mid part of the chest is aiming towards the right knee. Inhale, you're steady. Exhale, you're reaching through. That right leg doesn't have to be fully straightened. And come out of that side of the forward bend. Straighten that left leg out, bend the right knee. Take the right foot to the inner left thigh. Come on, again, the strap. You can see my back is flat, and that's what you'd want, and that's why you'd use the strap. No, I can keep my back pretty flat without using the strap. So my right hand's coming to the foot, and my left hand's to the outside. You can see my chest leaning out over the front knee. My neck stays long. On the inhale, breathe in. Exhale, you're reaching out and lengthening that left hamstring, and yet it doesn't have to be fully straightened. Inhale, breathe through. Exhale, pull out. Open through that left leg and the low back and your right hip joint as well. Let it open. And then let's come out of there and we'll try a widespread forward bend. So your legs are spread. They don't have to be as wide as possible. It's a Now, an alternative, if your hamstrings are pretty tight, you might get better stretch out of the standing forward bend. So I'm just showing the alternative for any of you who have a tough time with this pose. 
My left hand is coming to the right foot. You could use a strap instead, as I'm showing there. On the exhale, reaching out through the low rib cage, turning very slightly to the right with the upper body. It's a hamstring stretch. And then we'll take it to the second side. You could be in the standing position this whole while, and then you'd be leaning over and holding the ankle and stretching through the left hamstring, the low back. Or you're sitting and doing the same thing. Here my right hand's on the foot or the strap, left hand's to the outside, pulling out as you inhale and relengthening as you exhale that left leg, beginning to stretch or straighten. It doesn't have to be fully straightened. Inhale, steady in. Exhale, reaching through, turning slightly left and then come out of there and we're going to come into what's called a cow face so from the legs being forward take your right leg under and swing the right foot next to the left hip and then your left leg up and over now if that top knee doesn't drop because of tight outer hips then you might just take the knee up and twist slightly left. Ideally, the top knee drops close to the underneath knee and you lean forward. It's an outer hip stretch, outer buttock stretch. Try to keep long through the low back as you're stretching the outer hips. And then the second side. Your left leg under, the right leg over. And if the knees come pretty close, then good. If not, more like this, where the top knees up a little bit and you're leaning and twisting more to the right. Showing where you're just leaning forward. So this is cow face. That's the pose, the outer hip stretch. Try to tip both sitting bones back. Reach out with your chest. Keep your neck long as you're stretching your outer hip muscles. And then come out of there and we're going to come on to our back and do a couple back bends. So as you lie on your back, come back to the bridge pose. We did this earlier where you could weave your fingers or you could hold the ankles. On the exhale, you're reaching your pelvis toward the line of the knees and your upper belly away. There's some model back bend on how you can gain low back length in the midst of the back bend and then come down slowly. From here, if you have it in you, full back bend, chakrasana, wheel, hands into the shoulders and you push with the feet and come up into the full back bend. As you exhale, you could raise the heels of the feet, push and lift, push with the feet, lift the pelvis, open the chest. It's a challenging posture. If, you, if it's too much for you, do bridge again. And down slowly. And as you come down slowly, hold the knees. Squeeze. <clears throat> and now from here, we're going to stretch your low back out. It's a spinal twist. Take your left foot onto the straightened right leg. Cross that left knee across. Right hand comes to the outer left knee and the knee comes toward the floor. Your left shoulder is likely to come slightly off the ground. You're stretching your left hip and low back out, turning back left with your left upper body, reaching that left arm along the ground to the left, looking left. Feel the nice stretch in the low back. And second side. You straighten the left leg down. Right foot on left thigh. <coughs> left hand to the crossed over knee. Your right hand can help the right hip roll down. That's the key is to roll the right hip away from the rib cage. And as you can see, my right shoulder blade is off the ground a little bit. And yet I'm wrapping back with that right shoulder blade. And so I turn back right with the upper body as the right hip and right low back are being stretched as the knee is being pushed down with my left hand. This should feel good. It's just a nice low back twist. And then come out of there. 
and take both knees in, hold the knees, squeeze, and we've been here many times before, it's just a basic good position. And then take your hands onto the back of the head, lengthen the neck, and then bring your head down, and your legs either with the soles of the feet together, and the knees open, or into a crossed ankle position. Either one, and then your arms up past the head. You could hold, bend your elbows, and right hand to the left elbow, left hand to the right elbow, breathing. Low back is slightly off the ground. It's a good place to practice intercostal breathing, breathing through the ribs. And then let's come out of the that was cobbler on your back or easy pose on your back. And we're going to come into corpse pose now. So the main work of the asana session is completed. Now rest back deeply onto the floor. Your legs are about a foot and a half apart. The toes dropped open. The legs heavy back. Your hands or palms face up to the sides of the thighs. Your neck is long. Chin in. You're breathing slowly, steadily. You're like a corpse. Your body is just rested back in corpse position. As you're here, you might feel one part of the body pulling up away from the floor or any tight spot. So hone into the body and just relax through as much as you can so all parts of the body feel heavy back. That gravity has an equal effect upon all parts of the body. Maybe you're like a big rock, like a big boulder rock just resting back heavy into the floor. Now as your body relaxes back, Your mind is free. And now move your legs, bring them in, move your pelvis, your back, and begin to prepare to come up. Namaste.